to honor the thousands of young men and women buried here and elsewhere who put themselves in harm's way so that others might live in freedom. As we gather, it's dawn in America, Memorial Day weekend, first days of summer. Soon the screen doors will slam, parks are gonna sound with the crack of the baseball bat, children's voice, voices will rise in the summer breeze, pungent with the scent of barbecue smoke. And the rites of summer are marked by American traditions. As morning comes to Indianapolis, the smells of coffee and gasoline will mingle in the heat, rising off that sun-baked raceway. And further west, there's gonna be another race, as the blast of a ship's whistle sends the riverboats Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer steaming down the Mississippi, off the docks of St. Louis. Memorial Day weekend. In America's cities and towns today, flags will be placed on graves and cemeteries Public officials will speak of the sacrifice and the valor of those whose memory we honor. In 1863, when he dedicated a small cemetery in Pennsylvania marking a terrible collision between the armies of North and South, Abraham Lincoln noted the swift obscurity of such speeches. But we know now that Lincoln was wrong about that particular occasion. His remarks commemorating those who gave their last full measure of devotion were long remembered. But since that moment at Gettysburg, few other such addresses have become part of our national heritage. Not because of the inadequacy of the speakers, but because of the inadequacy of words. I have no illusions about what little I can add now to the silent testimony of those who gave their lives willingly for their country. Words are even more feeble on this Memorial Day, for the sight before us is that of a strong and good nation that stands in silence and remembers those who were loved and who in return loved their countrymen enough to die for them. Yet we must try to honor them, not for their sakes alone, but for our own. And if words cannot repay the debt we owe these men, surely with our actions, we must strive to keep faith with them and with a vision that led them to battle and a final sacrifice. Our first obligation to them and ourselves is plain enough. The United States and the freedom for which it stands, the freedom for which they died, must endure and prosper. The men and women we honor here serve for liberty. They sacrificed for liberty. And in countless acts of courage, they died for liberty. From faraway lands, they will return to cemeteries like this one where broken hearts received their broken bodies. They found peace beneath the white headstones in the land that they fought to defend. It is a solemn reminder of the cost of freedom that the number of headstones in a place such as this grows with every new Memorial Day. In a world where freedom is constantly under attack and in a world in where our security is challenged, the joys of liberty are often purchased by the sacrifices of those who serve a cause greater than themselves. Today we mourn and remember all who have given their lives in the line of duty. Today we lift up our hearts especially to those who've fallen in the past year. We remember Army Specialist Ronald Tucker of Fountain, Colorado. As a young man, Ronnie was known for having an infectious smile and a prankster sense of humor. And then he joined the United States Army. It is the love that binds this earth beneath us and bleeds from the hearts of all of those who died so that we might live free. We can never replace them. We can never repay them. But we can always remember. And today, that is what we are doing. We remember. 
Words cannot wipe away the tears or bring back those smiling faces. But if Americans just take the time to look into your eyes and tell you how much we thank you and how dearly we pray for you and how truly we love you, then hopefully you can find solace through your pain. And every time you see the sun rise over this blessed land, please know your brave sons and daughters pushed away the night and delivered for us all that great and glorious dawn. We remember that it is their courage, their unselfishness, their devotion to duty that has sustained this country through all its trials and will sustain us through all the trials to come. We remember that the blessings we enjoy as Americans came at a dear cost, that our very presence here today as free people in a free society bears testimony to their enduring legacy. Our nation owes a debt to its fallen heroes that we can never fully repay. But we can honor their sacrifice, and we must. We must honor it in our own lives by holding their memories close to our hearts and heeding the example they set. And we must honor it as a nation by keeping our sacred trust with all who wear America's uniform and the families who love them. By never giving up the search for those who've gone missing under our country's flag or are held as prisoners of war, by serving our patriots as well as they serve us from the moment they enter the military to the moment they leave it to the moment they are laid to rest.